Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Pray that you would send a blowing of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to uh, refresh us, to give us what we need. Open up our eyes to see your word more clearly. Open up our ears that we could hear. And we just pray that you'd use Pastor Izzy now, Lord, to, to minister to each one of us, Lord, that we would be molded in the potter's uh, hands, that you would be able to mold us and make us, make us sweet and full of your glory. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, guys, would you grab your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. We saw Paul writing to this church at Corinth, and uh, today we, we're actually going to get to, I'm going to try to kind of, I was going to go for maybe, you know, that whole end of chapter four and all of chapter five, but those of you that know me, that's a pipe dream, but uh, no, I, uh, well, we have, we have a blessing today. We have Chris visiting us again. It's been since 2005 that he and his wife were with us, Carmen. Where are you, Chris? They're right here, these two. Stand up, you two. And um, these two, Chris wrote me about a month or so ago on email and said, can I bring my friends to your church and baptize them? And, uh, and you know, this husband and wife that, that want to be baptized into Christ, but they want to do it in Hawaii in style. And so, um, you know, is that okay with you? I'm like, oh, twist my arm, okay. Another person baptized in Jesus. Let's... Jeepers. Okay, so today, if you look in your bulletin, the very first announcement, I don't know if Aaron pointed it out to you, but Juve and Sandy, his wife, would you two stand up? These two are going to get baptized into Jesus today at the end of the service. So I'm going to not do all of chapter five today. In fact, I'll just do four and then we'll go do the baptism and witness them. And ju they just asked if they could, it would be all right if they just joined us and had the support of the body to see these guys um, you know, join to Jesus. Now, we, we do celebrate baptism in, in, the, in the truest sense of what it teaches in the Scripture. In Romans 6, it says, Do you not know all of you that got baptized into Christ, that you're baptized into Christ into two things? Now, everyone that's been with me for years knows the answer to this, but I have to make sure these two guys know what they are, because I don't know if he told you to read this in Romans 6. But there's two things when you join yourself in baptism. You're joining yourself to Jesus. And it says, and, and, and be, in these two things that you join him to, you join him first in the likeness of his what? His death. When, when, when we put you down in the waters of baptism, it's like we're symbolically burying you. And, and the reason is so that just as Christ was died and was buried, remember what, what happened three days later? He arose. And so you don't just join Jesus in death. You join him in the resurrected power, the newness of life, it says. And so the old things get put away. Today we get to witness uh, Juve and Sandy putting away all the past mistakes, all the past hurts, all that stuff. Once you die, it's done. It's buried. Okay, And that's what you're going to do spiritually today is bury those, those things of the past so that you can go on to be pulled out of the... We don't hold you down for three days. It wouldn't work out well. <laughs> but a couple seconds is enough to bury the past. But, you know, for those of you that don't recognize this, this is one of the things in the Scripture that the Scripture teaches that help us. Paul says you have to consider this with your mind. He literally says you have to use that gray matter God gave you to think this one through. And you have to... Every believer needs to do this. That You have to think, I joined myself to Jesus. You didn't join yourself to a church. You joined yourself to the one who's the head of the church, the, the one that's the author of our salvation, the one that paid the price for all our sins, the one that forgives us of all our sins and says, look, I love you, but I love you so much. I accept you where you're at, but I'm not going to leave you there. That'd be cruel. You know, if he just accepted us in the mess that we came in and said, yeah, I love you, I accept you. Now, good luck, figure it out. That would be cruel and unusual punishment. I mean, that would be, we'd be like, what? But that's not the gospel. The gospel is that Christ came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. And the abundant life comes when we join ourselves to his son. And with our mind, we consider, I died to my sin. Now, I get to live a new life, alive to God. Dead to the flesh, alive to God. And for, for us that know this, it's a good reminder 
that we remember every day. I mean, daily. I, ha I don't know about you, but daily I find myself having to be using this m gray matter to go dead to sin. Dead. I'm dead to that. But I'm alive to God. And that's when new life begins. And some people, I hate to tell you this, but I know they're there because they call me. And they're like, Pastor, I just can't get over this. You don't understand. It was a really bad thing that happened to me. And, it was, and they tell it, and some of it's horrific. And as long as they're alive, they carry with them the pain of that horrible memory, that bad thing that happened to them. And they don't understand the power that comes through the waters of baptism that you can actually put that stuff down, buried, you can, you can go, look, yes, that did happen, but now I've died to those old things. I'm dead to that. Once you're died, you're free. Once you, just think about this, when you die, is any of the stuff that plagued you going to bother you again? I had a hangnail, man. It was just bugging me. He was really sore on my toe. Look, when you're dead, you won't care. Whatever the pain is, I don't care what it is. I'm just trying to bring out the point that once you've died, you're freed from it. And so in Christ, baptism frees us. Frees us from the past, frees us from the flesh, and now lets us live a new life to God. And today, Paul, he's right into the church at Corinth. Now, some people don't know the, the history of the church there, but they were in, the, in that metropolis in Corinth, what was a real um, hub of commerce. There was a lot of coming and going of wealth. In fact, last week we saw Paul said that they were actually quite wealthy. They were the well-to-dos of the day. Because they had, you know, I mean, when you're in a, like a port city with stuff coming and going, the only problem with port cities is you get all that stuff coming and going, all the trades and everything, but you also get all the sailors. And they've been out to sea for a while. And what do they want to see when they get in? You know, women. women and they want to go to the bar. And, they, and Corinth, Corinth was, I've said this before, but Corinth was, had a reputation in the ancient world of being what we would say like the Las Vegas, sin city of the ancient world. And God sent his gospel to this place. Now, those of you who might not know this, in the Bible, uh, we read about in the book of Acts that Paul actually spent a year and a half in Corinth on his second missionary journey, where he went there. And the Lord, the, he had been being beaten up. He got, he got stoned to death. They threw rocks at him, killed him, threw him over the wall of the city, and and said, get rid of, you know, they were so kind, they threw him into the rubbish heap outside the city. They're just like, this guy is such a plague. Stone him to death, and then, and then such a burial, right? Wouldn't it be a nice way to go? They just like, don't even give him a, a, a proper burial. They threw him over the wall into the trash pile. And he's dead. And you know what the Lord did? Get up, Paul. We're not done. And the Lord brought him back to life and made him go on. And he went on to this place, Corinth, and he, he got there. Now, I, I have a feeling he's a little bruised up. You know, a few rocks to the head, gotten killed, gotten brought back to life by the Lord, you know, and then told, go on. And he get, yeah, boo -boos. And then he gets, to the, he gets to the next place, and the Lord says, listen, you're going to be okay here. I want you to settle here and share my word. And I'm going to protect you here. Now, I, I know, I read this in the book of Acts. I'm sure that for Paul, he was going, oh, that's good news. Because, you know, after the last spot, I, I, you know, this is, by the way, if you want to know where this is found, this is Acts 18. I'm just um, paraphrasing for you the details so you can, you know, get a little extra to background to this. But he goes there and, and it says that... Um, Paul, in verse 9 of Acts 18, it says, The Lord said to him in a night vision, Do not be afraid any longer, but go on speaking. And, and he says, And don't, don't be silent. He says, For I am with you. And no longer will, will man attack you in order to harm you, for I have many people in this city. And he settled there for a year and six months, teaching the word of God amongst them. Now, this was his second missionary journey. Paul settles in Corinth for a year and six months, and he has the Lord telling him, don't worry, they're not going to harm you here. Good news if he had just gone through what he went through. And so he began to preach the gospel there, and the Lord had, the Lord had set up some really cool things for Paul in this whole you know, teaching of the gospel there. Later he will depart, 
after a year and a half of ministering to them. And the church there has got a pretty good, I mean, how'd you like to have Paul the Apostle be your pastor for the first year and a half of your existence, you know, as a church? Who was your founding pastor, Paul? You know, Saul, the guy that was made Paul, God, you know, uh, he used him a little, just a little. Pretty good, pretty good uh, founding pastor. And he, he, he then we, we come to the part that we're studying today in, in the, the book of Corinthians where Paul actually will come later in the missionary journey. He'll get to Ephesus and he will write back to the church on his third missionary journey. When he stops in Ephesus, he's going to write back to the church at Corinth. And he's going to say, guys, I got to tell you some stuff, some really important stuff. And, and it's things that, that your faith needs, okay? Because you have all that carnal stuff around you, and it's always hitting you. You ever feel like that, you know, no matter what you try to do to, to seek the Lord, there's always some kind of distraction that comes your way, always something to get in your face. Well, let, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4 this morning and see what Paul says. As he, he says to these fellows, he says, Listen, guys, I know that you guys... You guys are rich, and, you be, and, you, and you're filled. We went over this last week in verse 8, and, and, you, and you become kings, he says, without us. You, you really have gone on, and you've prospered, and you're doing, you know, like, but, but he says, but I, I well, I'm going to send Timothy to you because I hear there's a few problems. In your prosperity, not everything is running smooth in the church. And so Paul wrote, in verse 17, where we left off last week, he said this, For this reason I send to you Timothy, who's my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. And he's going to remind you, just remind you. I was there for, with you for an, uh, a year and a half teaching you. But he's going to remind you of what? We went over this last week. Of my teaching? No, read it real carefully. Look at verse 17. He will remind you of my ways, which are in Christ, just as I teach everywhere, in every church. He will remind you of not my teaching, my ways, how I behaved. I was with you for a year and a half. He'll remind you how I was. Because whether we like it or not, you can do all this, blah, 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 with this. And if your ways don't show Jesus to people, what which speak louder, actions or words? Actions, actions right? So Paul doesn't say, He'll remind you of what I said. He says, I'll remind you of how I was. I was with you. You, you want to know how, how to do Jesus? Paul, Paul was the guy who we saw last week said, just be an imitator of me. As I am an imitator of who? Of Christ. He says, you don't know how to do this Jesus thing? No worries. I'll show you. Now, every time I come across this verse, I can't help it, but want to say to everybody, hey, can you do that? Somebody comes to you and says, I, I'm new at this Jesus thing. How do I do it? And you go, don't worry. I'll show you. You, you don't say, I'll teach you. You just say, just copy everything you see me do as I copy Jesus, and then you'll know what to do. I'll teach you by example. How many of you could do that? Hey, I get all the snickers all the time, like, Everybody, I never get a lot of showing of hands on this one. It's not good. I really am, I mean, to be really brutally honest, this is an important thing. All of us should be able to raise our hands and say, I'll do it. I'll show a new believer how to walk after Jesus. By, not my words, by my what? Example. My ways, my example. I'll just... I will show them by the way I live. They can watch me in everything I do, and they will know that this is how you follow Jesus. But see, our culture doesn't like that. It makes us uncomfortable. You mean they're going to watch me all the time? Like, you know, like even in my private time? When I do my private little sins? Yeah. Which you shouldn't be doing. Because, you know, if there's something you're doing that you wouldn't want to teach a new believer, you just probably identified an area of sin in your life that you ought to leave behind. That's the old ways. That's the flesh. That, you're supposed to be dead to that. Now you're alive to God. Live like you're alive to God. And Paul said, Timothy will remind you of my ways, how I was around you, 
like he says, I teach in all the churches. In other words, he wasn't afraid to say he taught like this everywhere. He taught by example, not by just talking. This is, I don't know about you guys, this is my kind of spiritual man. I like guys that don't say, do as I say, but not as I do. That's not Paul. Paul was, do as I do, copying Jesus, so that you can get the idea of who you need to learn to copy. Because eventually, if they start copying you while you're copying the Lord, they're going to look right past over your head and go, you know, I really don't need you anymore. Because I see that all i got to do is look at him. Yeah, got it. When they, when they get that, when, they, when, when you get to pass on that they really don't have to see, you're just a temporary example to help them learn the ways of Christ. Once they learn, they start to see in the Spirit past you, and they're like, I don't even need you anymore. I just look right at Jesus, and you're going, good job. Now you be the example to someone else. You keep imitating Christ and show someone else how to do it. And it keeps you on the straight and narrow. It's a great thing to do. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.